Welcome to 2016 and welcome to the start of year number four for us here at the Ask Pastor John podcast. And we are back with guest Dr. Don Whitney, who serves as the professor of biblical spirituality and associate dean of the School of Theology at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville. He is also known for writing his classic book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, which was originally published in 1991 and then revised and expanded in 2014. Don is also the author of a new book from Crossway, and that new book is titled Praying the Bible. The new year 2016 is here, and with a new year brings renewed interest in all of the disciplines of life, including the spiritual disciplines. And January 1st is a good date to reset our spiritual practices. And for the first week of of the new year, I want to ask you, Dr. Whitney, five of the most common questions that we get on the spiritual disciplines. We started yesterday, and we'll continue on today and then into next week. And here's the next question I have for you. Help us with, with this. How do you distinguish the personal disciplines from the congregational disciplines? It is important for people to distinguish between personal spiritual disciplines and what I call interpersonal spiritual disciplines. The private and the public, the individual and the corporate or congregational. There are those disciplines that we are to practice alone, but there are those disciplines we are to engage with the church in order to practice. And the goal of both is is to experience God. The bo- goal of both is is godliness, growth in godliness. So, for example, we the, we're to pray alone. The Bible surely teaches that. Jesus said, "When you pray, get into your closet and close the door and so forth." That's a personal spiritual discipline. But the Bible also would have us pray with the church. That's an interpersonal, corporate, congregational discipline. We are to get into the Bible all by ourselves, read it on our own, study it, memorize it on our own. That's a personal spiritual discipline. But we're to hear the Bible read, taught, preached with the church. So that's a congregational discipline. We are to worship God privately. We're to worship God publicly. Now, some of the spiritual disciplines are by nature personal and private. Solitude, by definition, would be one like that. Fasting is one that you usually practice alone. You can do that with a church, but uh, that that certainly has that that individual aspect to it much of the time. Uh, To keep a spiritual journal is something you do by yourself. Some of the biblical spiritual disciplines, by nature, are interpersonal. Fellowship, for example, not mere socializing, not just talking about news, weather, sports, work, family, politics. That's good, healthy, normal. But koinonia, that that New Testament uh, Greek term there for fellowship, involves talking about God and the things of God. It's life together in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that requires people. Uh, You don't fellowship by yourself. To hear the word of God preached requires a preacher and hearers. A very important one, uh, the Lord's Supper. We're we're told by Jesus, do this in remembrance of me. Well, we're not to serve the Lord's Supper to ourselves and our private devotional life. That's given to the church. We should experience that with the church. So those are corporate spiritual disciplines. And we should practice both the personal and the interpersonal for two reasons. Number one, the Bible teaches both. And number two, Jesus practiced both. For example, on at least four occasions, we're told in the Gospels, Jesus got alone to pray, thereby practicing personal spiritual disciplines. But in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, we're told as his custom was, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, thus engaging in interpersonal spiritual disciplines. Now, wouldn't you think if anyone ever had a pass in in coming to public worship, it would be Jesus. I mean, he had all these people to heal, all this teaching to do, his messianic ministry to fulfill, and he knew he had a very short time to do that. So why would he pull away from this public ministry to sit and listen to some dusty old rabbi preach what must have been to him a boring sermon? (laughs) And I often say to people, uh, only a preacher, I think, can really understand what I mean when I say that Jesus must have often sat there thinking, boy, I could do better than that. Uh, but, But he was there. Why was he there? Because it was the appointed time for the people of God together. And Jesus said, those are my people. That's where I want to be. I mean, it's much like when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus had no sins to be symbolically washed away in the waters of baptism like those who came to John the Baptist did. So Jesus was baptized to identify with his people. The people were being baptized to identify with the Messiah that John was preaching. Jesus was baptized to identify with those people. That's why Jesus came 
for the appointed time of public worship. He said, that's where the people of God are gathered. Those are my people. I want to be numbered among them. I don't want it to be said, oh, you're the Messiah, huh? Then how come you're out here doing your own thing when the people of God are to be gathered here? So Jesus engaged in the interpersonal spiritual disciplines and the personal spiritual disciplines. He is our example for spirituality, for walking with God. Now, he's much more than our example. He's our Lord, our Savior, our King, our substitute, and so forth. But he is not less than our example. And Jesus practiced both the personal and the interpersonal spiritual disciplines. And that's a very important point today when there seems to be so much talk about spirituality in general in the culture. But it's always personal. It's always individual. And spirituality is not individualized in the New Testament. There is the individual component, but there is this crucial interpersonal component to spirituality, and we're calling those the interpersonal, congregational, corporate spiritual disciplines, and we need both. And you know what? We're all inclined a little bit one way or the other. There are some people, they love their personal spiritual disciplines. They love to be alone with God. They get so much out of that. Some might say, I get more out of that than I do down there with that ungodly half-committed bunch down at the church. They only slow me down anyway. And then there are other people, the people perhaps who are there just about every time the doors are open, and their error is to think, you know, if I'm here pretty much every time the doors are open, and I am, and I profit from that as I do, I'm, I'm sure in the end that will compensate for the lack of a devotional life. Well, no, it won't. We, we all have our temperament, our own inclination, a little more toward the personal or the interpersonal, but we need both. The Bible teaches both. Jesus practiced both. Amen. We need them both. Thank you, Dr. Whitney. And speaking of congregational disciplines, we're going to break for the weekend now so that we can all enjoy the benefits of those congregational disciplines. And on Monday, we will return to this conversation, and I will ask, how do we know if we're doing the spiritual disciplines rightly? If we're doing them right, what should be happening in my life? I'm your host, Tony Ranke. I'll see you on Monday.